Welcome back to our fourth IB Python 3 notebook series video. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at historical data and real-time bars. We will import our required modules, establish our connection to TWS, view any additional messages returned, In this example, we'll be looking at Apple, Microsoft, the Spider, S&P 500, ETF Trust, SPY for the symbol. Uh, these are the contract identifiers for those contracts um, and for IBM, apparently. And we will be looping through the contracts, requesting the historical data for these, uh, these five contracts. So let's do that. Now here's a simple plot function that will just plot the results that are returned. Uh, here is a correlation um, function for plotting the correlation, uh, which we'll be viewing below. We'll just uh, run this for now. These are just helper functions that are used. Now here we're going to plot for the symbols above all of the uh, historical data that we received. So here is the spider, SPY, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, and IBM. So this illustrates how easy it is to get and plot historical price data. Now Pandas is a module uh, for Python that was developed by Wes McKinney. It is absolutely wonderful and makes data analysis of time series um, and, and other data analysis uh, quite, quite powerful in Python. So we'll be using this module. Uh, now again, we've created some helper functions. One is for unpacking the bars that are received, just uh, and we'll create a data frame and return that Python data frame um, back. So that's what the unpack bars function does. So we'll just run that cell. Now, for each of the contracts above where we received the price data, we'll create a data frame for those, which that cell does. Now, using that data frame, we can just plot the price of Apple. So again, it's the same information. But using the, the date, the, if you look carefully, the uh, dates are formatted a little differently down here. This is actually using the data frame and Python uh, to return the actual chart. Now, one of the benefits of Pandas is the uh, data frame itself and how that is stored uh, cohesively within Python. It is very easy to do additional functions. In this case, we're going to look at the uh, closing price for the last 10 days that we received. And so here, for all the securities that we've requested, these are the last 10 days, the percentage, the daily return of the price over the last 10 days. It's quite simple. We can easily plot a distribution of returns that we um, of each of those securities. So this just graphs. It's a little mangled uh, for the formatting down here, but it gives you a quick histogram of the daily returns for each of those securities um, over the past year. And here, this is the um, what is this? This is looking at a single date. This is the last day of data that we've received. We're looking at the, for a single day, we're looking at all the data that we have received in our data frame, which consists of all the securities together with the open, high, low, close, the volume, the count, um, the weighted average price, and whether or not there are any gaps in the data. Again, this is using Pandas. So if we stack that in a different manner, we can view the securities going along this way and the dates going down the bottom and the 
open, high, low, close, et cetera, on each of those dates. So that's just uh, creating a frame uh, from, or creating a panel uh, from, the, from the data frame that we had and just viewing the data in a different, uh, different manner. Now here, we'll just look at the percentage monthly returns. So using the data that we received in our request, Pandas just uh, makes the monthly percent returns for each of those stocks and plots it out um, in a relatively readable format for each month. Obviously, Facebook here had a tremendous return in July, for instance, July 2013. Come April or come March 2014, the return is down more than 10%. So this is a, a relatively easy way to view the data. And we could do some more simple analysis. We could look at the relative performance, for example, of each of these securities. Again, uh, Facebook has uh, outperformed quite handily, quite handsomely over the past year. This is all based to 100 at the date one year ago, which in this case corresponds to April 23rd of 2013. So it just re-indexes all of the prices and does a cumulative return with an initial index value of 100. We can also do a scatter plot of returns. Here we're looking at the Apple daily returns plotted against the um, Spider daily returns, which proxy the S&P 500. So a correlation that you can view there. We could do a linear model of those daily returns. This is for each of the securities, Facebook, IBM, Apple, Microsoft. There is the regression line with a confidence interval around that. We could also simply just do a grid. This uh, is a scatter plot of the returns, the daily returns over the past year for each pair of securities. For example, the S&P 500 against Microsoft, um, whereas against Apple, there's much lower correlation over the past year. If we want, we can view the max, the largest return of Apple, and view the return of the other securities on that same date. So this was about a 5% return for Apple on July 24th, 2013. And these were the, uh, the returns of the other securities on that date. We'll do the same thing for Microsoft. Microsoft had a 7% return on August 23rd, 2013. We can also easily compute correlations and generate a heat map, for instance. So the hotter the correlation, the more red it is. Uh, these values here have relatively low correlation. The blues are, are very low. This, this is a very low correlation between Microsoft and Apple, for example, whereas it, it sort of heats up down in this region down here. Now, let's look at real-time bars. In interactive brokers, when you request real-time bars, the only option is a five-second bar. So what we'll do is first of all, we'll just make the request. And what I'm doing here is I'm waiting 60 seconds. This is to allow time for one minute of real-time bars to accumulate. Uh, five second bars, that's 20 bars that will come back in a minute's time. Now just up here, uh, we're looking at Apple for the contract. Here are some additional contracts which can be run, for instance, to, uh, to view against. And we're requesting real-time bars with the client um, with the ticker IDs. We're, first of all, using a unique identifier. We're, the contract is, in this case, Apple. Uh, what we want to show are the trades and uh, use regular trading hours. False. It is regular trading hours right now, however, so that won't matter. Um, we're sleeping right now. 
Uh, once this is done, this will load all the bars that have been returned and it will print them out. Oh, and here we go, these are the bars. So these are each the open, high, low, close for each of the five second intervals over the past minute. Uh, the trade count, uh, excuse me, the count for the number of bars, the volume, and the weighted average price. Now this function here gives us a little graph of uh, the price that those bars uh, closed at during that one minute interval. The, the, the format is a little strange, so it's a little difficult to read, uh, but for instance, the close was 531.27. This is 5.312, so you're just really kind of looking at the, the very last two digits of that. So it's a bit difficult to read in this format, but that's, uh, that's how it is. And these are the actual bars that were returned um, in that minute using the uh, Pandas uh, data frame. This is the timestamp that was returned, and that has been converted into a local uh, timestamp for, uh, for, and that was up here, for uh, Ill just for, for illustration purposes. So that concludes our historical data and real-time bars video.